Highness. Thank you for letting us in in your beautiful palace. Thank you. Welcome. His Royal Highness was born in London in 1945, and after what I've heard, this is a very special story. Yes. Can the Crown Prince tell us more about it? Well, I was born in Claridge's Hotel by plan, and uh, the suite was turned into Yugoslav territory, which was a very nice gesture by the then Prime Minister Winston Churchill. What an extraordinary story. Unusual. Yes. But it did happen with the Dutch royal family in Ottawa also. After your father, King Peter, died in 1970, you declined the title of king. Why? I never declined it. I said I had the rights to it, but to use the name of king would have been very strange at the time. It was the height of a communist state. So all I said, I have my rights, I'm not giving up anything, full stop. When you was in exile, did you ever thought you could return to Serbia? Not really, because I thought that there would be a communist state and a Soviet Union forever. Uh, in 1970 it was a tough time, and also in the 1980s, but things started happening. Of course, you remember the fall of the Berlin Wall in 1989 and the collapse of the Soviet Union. Then I thought differently, that there might be a chance. But sadly, the course took a very dangerous one, and that was the wars of succession in the former Yugoslavia, which were done by our nationalists, or shall we say, uh, leaders of each country using negative religion and ne negative uh, nationalism. Mm -hmm. When you finally returned to Serbia, how was it to come home? Extremely emotional. We first came here in 1991. The opposition against the regime were united, and they asked us to come to support their effort against the regime. We accepted, and this was my first time on Yugoslav territory, arriving in Belgrade. I was with my wife and the three children, and we spent three days here. It was very emotional arriving here. We were met by hundreds of thousands of people. And then uh, I didn't come back until my uncle uh, was very ill. He was living there, here. And uh, again, we came here and we saw the disaster that was going on, the tragedy of the war, uh, the ethnic cleansing, and all these horrible things. And I, I thought, really, I've got to work harder for this. So I met uh, the democratic opposition. I became friends with what, who became the future prime minister, Mr. Zoran Zinjic. And then I implemented, after the bombing here, which was criminal, um, I implemented meetings, conferences, in Budapest, in Bosnia, Athens, and the last one was organized by Kennedy School of Government at Harvard to unite the democratic opposition against the regime then. Uh, this was successful, and the regime uh, canceled elections that took place in September uh, 2000 that the opposition won, and everybody went on the streets on the 5th of October 2000, and the regime collapsed, and Five days afterwards, the Prime Minister calls me up, come, come back, thank you very much, we're waiting for you. So that's why we're back. Yes. As a royal yourself, you have naturally met a lot of European royals and the royal families, and you have a special connection with the British royal family in the fact that Queen Elizabeth is your godmother. Yes. How is your relationship with the British royal family, and especially Her Majesty the Queen? Well, it's always been very good. Her father, King George VI, was my godfather. And Her Majesty has been very good to me. Uh, we occasionally meet at Buckingham Palace or we meet at Windsor Castle. Uh, it's a very, of course, uh, nice time to, to talk with her. Uh, she's extremely knowledgeable and deeply respected. Um, I was also at school with Prince Charles in, in Gordonston in Scotland. And uh, we're, we are very happy that he came to visit us here uh, it was a great occasion. So the relations with the British royal family are very, very nice, but also with all the other royal families. We seem to be interrelated. Yes. <laughs> and as a Norwegian, it's natural for me to ask about your relationship with the Norwegian royal family. Well, what do we, you think about them? We are we're very friendly with them. We're very friendly with their majesties and the crown prince, the crown princess. Mm -hmm. uh, they're a wonderful royal family. We admire them very much and their work. Also, on a sad uh, story, I, I did go to King Olaf's uh, funeral 
Uh, and that was a very moving, moving situation. Um, I had great admiration of him. Mm. And then a bit about the Serbian politics today and the possible restoration of a monarchy. After the fall of communism here in Serbia, we have seen a great support for the restoration of the monarchy with you as a monarch. And in 2008, the Kingdom of Serbia Association was created by Serbian students, the young generation of Serbia. What does this say about the possibility of a future Serbian monarchy? Well, there is great interest. There's no doubt about it. My wife and I travel all over Serbia, and we are received extremely well by all the municipalities, no matter what political party they're associated with. Uh, we also deliver equipment to all the hospitals and health centers. This is my wife's foundation, and she'll explain you more. And we notice a tremendous uh, feeling uh, for the history of our country. Uh, we were always a monarchy. Uh, this year we'll be celebrating 800 years of monarchy. Uh, my father never abdicated in 1945. Uh, the kingdom was stolen from him on the 29th of November, 1945. Um, these young people that you just mentioned are very fine young people and they have offices throughout Serbia. Uh, they are an association that explains what constitutional monarchy is. The objective is constitutional monarchy, not absolute monarchy. Uh, we respect everyone, regardless of religion, ethnic origin, and political persuasion, provided they believe in democratic process. Uh, this government, uh, which was just formed yesterday, my wife and I were in the parliament for swearing in and the Speaker of the House fully respected our presence. So this is positive. But there's a lot of things that happened here during the dictatorship years. Uh, for example, uh, whenever there was a scandal uh, within the League of Communists, they would point out that my father left the country with a trainload of gold. This never happened, and it's been proven. So there still are some people who believe in this. And nowadays, we work very much with the internet. And you have newspapers that publish articles. They're very good. And you have the freedom of people to make comments, which is also very good. But we noted there are few people who make extraordinary comments, which are total lies. What I suppose they call in America now fake news. Yeah. <laughs> yes. The restoration of the monarchy is also supported by many Serbian parliamentarians and some political parties. Yes. Why is it not held a referendum on this issue? Uh, well, as I mentioned, my father never abdicated. So why have a referendum? The answer is to have a constitutional assembly, which consists of the various political parties who meet together in the parliamentary situation and discuss how to move forward. You noted how referendums have failed. I give you an example. Greece was a tragedy. Uh, where it failed dramatically. I am not there to talk about politics over the television, the radio, or the written media. It's the parties who d should discuss politics, and the meeting point for unity and continuity is the king, who does not take sides. So I'm not, I cannot be part of the debate. Uh, I'm not looking for political office. And one last question, Your Royal Highness. Do you think you will ever be crowned king of Serbia? That depends upon the people and God. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you for the time. Thank you for coming. It has given me an opportunity to give my support to my husband and to the family. I believe that uh, monarchy is a unifying factor, and I'm very proud of my husband, who has become the symbol of unity, stability, and continuity. I believe that monarchy, in this age we live in, is the most important thing this world could have because they are neutral. They are there for the people. 
and that they put people first. And that's what miss, it's missing nowadays in the world we live in. How was it for the Crown Princess to come to Serbia in 1991? It was an incredible feeling. When I met my husband, he looked at me with tears in his eyes. And he said, I've never been home. And my wish is to be home. And I had promised my father, who was the only king buried in America, to be brought home. And I promised to bring him home when I have never been there myself. So I am very happy and feel very touched. Uh, and I appreciate my husband's efforts. Uh, it is, we are not here because he's the son of King Peter. We are here because he has brought democracy to our country. Monarchy is not what it used to be. You have to earn that opportunity. You might have it by inheritance but you have to be able to make a difference in the lives of the people. And that's what we're here for, to give them a better life and a chance to feel secure, happy, and content, and proud of our country like we are. The Crown Princess had particular work to improve the conditions for ill children here in Serbia, and you have your own organization. Can you tell us a bit more about this organization? Uh, I, I'm very happy that I have this opportunity. I, I had parents who taught me the joy of giving, not the joy of taking. And they didn't just tell me. They lived their life by giving. My father was one of the biggest philanthropists in Greece. And I'm very proud of what I learned from my parents. They prepared me for my role without knowing what my future will be. I was very young, and when you learn the joy of giving when you're young, you never forget. I prayed to God for an opportunity to give of myself, since that's happiness. And uh, God gave me Alexander and the whole country. So when you pray, you have to make sure that's what you want. The Crown Princess is also a patron of an American organization, Life yes. Life. Can you tell us a bit more about this organization yes. and why you wanted to be a patron of it? Uh, we came to Serbia in 1991. And the first medical equipment we gave to the children's hospital in Tishova here in Belgrade was 25 years ago. The joy I felt seeing all those doctors and nurses being thrilled would be given an equipment made me feel that why, why, why is, this is just the beginning. It's just the crowning of an opportunity. Why don't I do more? And so in 1993, I opened my first office in Chicago, then we went to New York, Toronto, Canada, London, uh, uh, Athens, Greece, and Belgrade when we came here. And for me, this is an incredible effort uh, to try to help. This is my biggest month in all these years. $1,700,000 of medical equipment, four sterilizers, and one mammography, uh, which is uh, very much needed because of the situation we have here with breast cancer, yeah. the highest in Europe. Mm, fantastic. How has the Crown Princess been welcomed by the other royal families of Europe? Well, we are close with the families, and uh, we need that closeness, all of us, because uh, uh, this role is a very uh, gratitude role, a role that you get so much satisfaction by giving so much of yourself and the way people respect it and love it and love you. Mm -hmm. But uh, when you are with the royal families around the world, you feel relaxed, you all live a similar life, and uh, also the trust is there, the love is there. And uh, my husband, being an only child, lo losing, his, not having his country to grow up in, uh, having parents in exile, family for him meant even more to him because the royal families were the ones who uh, took care of him, look after him, like uh, 
the Greek family in Greece uh, with his grandfather being a king of Greece and uh, his uh, relationship with all the family in Greece. It was wonderful. He spent a lot of his summers with them. But generally, all the families uh, uh, around Europe and uh, are really great and we admire each and every one of them. Sweden, we are very close to Sweden and of course uh, Norway and all the other royal families. The British of course is <laughs> it's my husband's godmother and King Charles's godfather so he has incredible respect and admiration uh, for them and of course for His Royal Highness the Prince of Wales and his wife and the, the children are really we are very, very happy to be part of this family who are doing so much good, each one of them in their own countries. Thank you for your kind company. Thank you very much.